Okay, we're back live inside our cube here in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and our continuous coverage of the Hadoop ecosystem, uh, going way back to the original days at Cloudera when I was down at, at hanging out with those guys, now and then the original Hadoop World, Hadoop World 1, 2, HBase Conference. This ecosystem's exploding, it's fantastic, it's exciting to bring you our exclusive coverage of this amazing now vertical going mainstream. My next guest is Jonathan Gray with Continuity. Formerly of Facebook, last time you were on theCUBE at Hadoop World, you were with Facebook. I was, uh, that was my last talk just, as a Facebooker. I mean, just went public, uh, a lot of action there. They give a keynote here. Jonathan, welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks uh, for having me. So, Continuity startup, we've had Todd Papiano on theCUBE, you've both been on theCUBE. Um, you've, well, you've been on theCUBE three times, twice as stealth where you talked about big data and nothing about the company, <laughs> and then once about the company, but you couldn't go into detail because GigaOM was breaking the story, so, you know. Um, well, but, we're still not going into detail, on, tell us unfortunately, about we're still not going right, into so detail. Give us, some, give us a teaser, um, show a little leg. I mean, just talking about, where, talking about where I've been, I mean, at Facebook, we did a bunch of really great stuff to talk about in the keynote this morning, but, you know, the point of my new company is to say, look, Facebook was super successful building that. They got 15 of the best and brightest engineers in the world working on it. And the question for us and our company is how do you enable one or two developers to build the exact same types of applications, maybe at a slightly lesser scale, but still a significant scale, um, and just make their lives easy, powerful, all that kind of stuff. So when you were at Facebook, um, I noticed watching you, watching you do your thing, you were very actively involved in the HBase community, opening up the doors, having meetups in Facebook, very collaborative hackathons. Yep. Um, what has, what, how has that grown within Facebook? Um, what's happened since those hackathons? I know a lot of people were hired, they grow on their team. Do you have any visibility now on what, how big the teams are over there? Not a whole ton. They keep it close to the chest. Um, <laughs> but there's a whole bunch of guys I don't know anymore, so it's definitely that still means growing, growing and there's definitely you know, all that stuff going on. They've actually moved some HBase guys into New York, I know that as well. So there's California and New York HBase guys. So what is happening in this conference? Why is this conference so important? And then I want you to share with folks What's impressed you about the HBase community in terms of people and functionality? So what's happening here, and then what's, what's impressing you about HBase? What's here and what's just completely awesome is that this conference is a use case conference. It's all applications. You know, you were at the first Hadoop Worlds and you saw the first Hadoop Worlds were actually not really about applications, and Hadoop Summit especially. It's about architecture, it's about scalability, it was about underlying bits and nasty it was things very, about Hadoop World was geeky, the first it one was, was very geeky. geeky. Yeah. You know, and there is a little bit of geek into this conference, but not that much. I mean, you have eBay and Gap. They're all practitioners and, here. And They're all in the have, trenches. I mean, the, the, they said it, you know, Michael Stack, the kind of head of HBase, said it this morning in his keynote. Um, they were going for applications in production. And that's amazing that they basically filled the entire schedule and said no to a bunch of people just with in production applications, you know. And that's super exciting. People are actually solving real problems in production today. You know, you go to Facebook, you go to eBay, you go to Gap. What you're doing is being stored and retrieved out of HBase. And so for someone like me, that's super exciting that you know, people are actually getting a lot of value out of this. In the early days of HBase, when you were involved in the community, what were some of the core issues that you well overcome and, and, and look back on and say, wow, we thought those were hard problems? Yeah, I mean, what's been, what's been really exciting is when I got into HBase around 2007, it was part of Hadoop. It was the same thing, it wasn't a separate project. And it was really just still a batch-oriented system. And what's been exciting, and the, you know, the tagline for the conference today is, real time your Hadoop. In 2007, that wasn't actually what HBase was about. You know, it wasn't about real time access, it wasn't about serving data, it was really just about um, having a place to store your web crawl data. And since that, since then, we've really moved it. My first company, Streamy, built our entire thing on top of HBase. And we were one of the first yeah. applications to say, look, we're going to write into HBase, and we're going to read, and we're going to serve all of our data out of it. And we had a hell of a time doing that. So it's interesting, <laughs> today, in the news, today in the news, there's two stories, one in the Wall Street Journal and one in the New York Times. The one in the Wall Street Journal is basically dissing Facebook because of all this public social data. And the one in the New York Times, actually more provocative, written by John Markoff, talks about the challenge, how social scientists really are having a hard time coming to grips with all the data. And, so, and one's a data glut, and one's saying, there's just too, I don't know how to deal with it all. So in a way, mainstream press, negative articles, um, but really, Positive as, for the industry. as I tweeted, <laughs> huge entrepreneurial opportunity. Absolutely. I mean, I think, was it, did Todd coin the term social exhaust? He definitely didn't. Okay. Did, I think Google did, digital Google, exhaust. Digital exhaust. Google, Google coined that term. Social data, all that's out there, and, and by, its, by itself is, doesn't look very compelling, but with big data you can actually 
come main, make sense of it. And HBase has been really good architecture for that. Can you explain to the folks why HBase is so good for this new class of data? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there's two main kind of core components of what makes HBase this really critical component into the Hadoop ecosystem. So Hadoop is great for cheap storage of your events and bulk processing of those events. But what it's not great at is any kind of real-time online thing. So people use Hadoop today to build targeting models, for example, right? But when I want to actually target to my website, I can't serve that out of HGFS. I have to put that into some other system. And today, people are putting that into a relational database or something like that. With HBase, you say, I'm doing my analysis on a cluster, and I'm serving directly out of that cluster, too. So you have one system that allows you to do all of the same batch kind of analysis you're doing, plus the serving. The other side, I would say, is, and they talked about this in the keynote around application development. What's happening now is application development. We're moving up the stack, and everyone's focused on actually building applications, delivering value to their business. Hadoop is a file-based thing that no one can understand. I have flat files. I can write to the end of them, and I can read them. And that's not really a very powerful, it is powerful, but it's a limiting set of things. HBase has tables with rows and columns. This is something that people understand. This is something that's been well understood for, for 30, 40 years. And so that table model of random access gives applicability to all of the existing kind of applications so, so, that people have so been building. So people in the database world, I know Mike Stonebreaker who started Vertica, who Mike Olson knows very well, yes. um, columnar stores, and there's different sure. approaches. How do, what, how do you people make sense of that? Is there, what is, how does HBase different from these columnar stores, database only? I know there's still different row column situation going on with HBase, but why is HBase so unique as one example? And then you've got other things, Mongo and other approaches. Sure. How, do so, you, how do you talk to people about that? It's a complicated issue, <laughs> you know? And, Some politics. And there's absolute Some. politics, and there's dogma, and all of the good stuff you have in computer science. Um, but what I would say is that the main advantage of HBase, one thing when you compare it to the other NoSQL stuff is the tight coupling with Hadoop. And so what that means is I want to run MapReduce jobs, I can run them on HBase. I want to run Hive jobs, I can run them on HBase. And so they're in the same ecosystem, and they speak the same APIs. Um, is it also timing too? I mean, a lot of times in, in the tech business, I mean, I've seen uh, many innovation cycles and sometimes the best product doesn't always win. Is it the fact that HBase was kind of hobbling along and just happened to be a nice place, untouched, like a piece of clay that hasn't been shaped yet, and as the world goes real time, is that, could that be a reason, you think? Yeah, I mean, or is that so, kind of... HBase is super low level, very powerful platform that doesn't, it, it gives you a bunch of great primitives and things like that, but doesn't actually solve your problem. You have to build an entire thing on top of it. But what's happening now is there's companies like Wibby Data, which is one of the companies here that I'm really excited about, which is to say a developer doesn't want to speak in three-dimensional byte array cubes, this very low level, hard to understand architectural kind of detail. What they want is more friendly APIs with some kind of schema and some kind of types of data. Right? They want data types and things that make sense, and they've always been there in the relational world. Those are being built now on HBase, and so it's making it much more accessible. Do you think the demand on the developer side is to have these prefabricated kind of software environments right now? I think that, is it the tools that are in the most need for? Is it more? Um... So there's two things. There's there's the APIs, and then there's another piece, and this this is part of what continuity is trying to do, and it's to say. Today, if I want to build something on HBase, I can go to Apache website, or I can go to the Cloudera website, or the Hortonworks, and get a package version of it. And then I have to put the software somewhere, and I have to run it, and I have to scale it out. And then if it crashes, I have to look at the logs and understand what happened. And so it's a really manual, intensive, infrastructure type operation to just build something on HBase. And so what we're trying to, what, what, what continuity wants to say, and I think where things are moving is, why should an application developer be dealing with operations and management of infrastructure? How do we abstract away the infrastructure and instead provide a really good environment, powerful but easy to use environment for developers, where they don't have to worry about their name node going down and they don't have to worry about HBase versioning and they don't have to do a bunch of that stuff. We take care of that. And so I think what you're going to see and you're going to just well, see application development it's... take off is APIs and hosted solutions. And those things are going to combine to just enable this massive wave of, of application development. Yeah, and you can be, if you can provide that framework, developers will come on board. Because it's about, it's about complexity and simplicity and making it less complex and it's more simpler to do development. Absolutely. Um, so that's basically a good question. So what you're basically talking about is software guys aren't normally infrastructure guys, yeah. right? So DevOps has been a big conversation. Um, as uh, Strata, <laughs> Theo Schlotnagel said, it's not DevOps, it's Ops Dev. 
So depending upon how you look at the room, from the, you know, which side of the room you're on, if you're an ops guy, it's ops dev. If you're a dev guy, it's dev ops. Um, developers make a mistake and can reboot a cluster. Right. You can't reboot an operation. You can't, some <laughs> operations have five nines. You know, it's, oh, sorry, we're down. We just lost millions of dollars in, yeah, in, in business. Absolutely. But, okay, I buy that argument. But in reality, you guys at Facebook built your own operations. You were developing, you were, had DevOps was like the core job description. What is DevOps in your mind? And two, what is going on in that market right now? It's really interesting, you know. Um, I'm, you know, I only graduated college six, six, seven years ago, and so I haven't been out here long, but when I started, there was no DevOps, it was just Ops. And there was a wall between engineering and Ops. And I've been really, you know, being in one environment where that existed, and you were, were you on the Ops side? Oh, never. Oh, yeah. Okay. No. I was a software engineer, you know, a computer yeah. engineer, and so I was always, you know, so even, you had below shadow, the, even below the software. Did you have sometimes. a shadow operations? You ran your own operations, right? So you, so what you, do, you do ops, you do ops. I mean, so at Streamy, I did everything ops and development. We built HBase and then we also operated it. At Facebook, what we had was nested ops, right? Where they were DevOps, but they sat with the engineering team, and that was really hugely important. One thing I think that's happened with DevOps, why there's DevOps, you know, continuity, we, we just hired our first DevOps guy, you know, sixth employee. Sixth employee. It's totally yeah. incredible. Yeah. Uh, Sixth employee at a startup is a DevOps guy. Folks, DevOps is real from uh, cutting edge steps. Go ahead, continue. We're building a hosted platform, and so we need DevOps. Yeah. Um, but what it really is, and I think this points to talk about how hard and how immature the technologies are, is that you know you can have a MySQL ops guy, and he doesn't have to even know what a B tree is. Yeah. You can't have an HBase ops guy that doesn't understand basically the architectural details of how the system actually is, is working. Well, eventually, if HBase becomes popular, you will have those abstractions and you start to see exactly. that Exactly, and I think you'll, you'll see ops, a true ops guy, show up in the Hadoop ecosystem. Who's got a, quote, HBA, you know, not DBA, but a, you know, <laughs> some sort of equivalent exactly. certification from Cloudera, right? Exactly, and so you see Cloudera, right? They're trying, yeah. they make DBA tools yeah. now, basically. Yeah. And um, you, Potentially, there could be someone who doesn't understand how MapReduce works that yeah. runs a Hadoop cluster today. Same cannot be true you for HBase. You heard it here first on theCUBE, HBA, the new job title. Well, it's exciting. Tell Todd, we said hello. Really Absolutely. appreciate you. Um, you know, you have an interesting perspective right out of college only a few years ago. Um, you, didn't, you didn't have to live that baggage of the old life of when we used to be all hey, really, I, really, I started as a know. PostgreSQL yeah. uh, contributor. <laughs> so I've gotten um, my hands dirty in the relational world, but. So, Happy so when did you it. leave Facebook? So you just recently left Facebook. I just left at the end of November. So what do you think about the IPO? You got to be pretty excited, you have friends there. It's What's the inside exciting. baseball at Facebook right now? What's the I was the vibe? there yesterday actually. I'm happy to say I had no idea that they just IPO'd. So, so they're not mm -hmm. jumping around popping champagne, getting One day, wasted. they gave themselves one day. Yeah, so they're back to work. They're back. Yeah, you know, cool. They always say 1% done and, and they still got that going and um, Final, I have a lot of faith in them. Final question, this is a Facebook kind of question to tie into your current thing. Give the, the folks out there some insight into what you did at Facebook and how that translates into what's happening in the HBase future roadmap of, of, of the general market in, in general. Some of the innovations that you did at Facebook and how that's going to translate to a broader market. I mean, HBase at Facebook took HBase to the largest scale it is. You know, they talked about it in the talk this morning. Um, they're growing at 10 petabytes of storage a year on their HBase cluster. That's 10 petabytes a year of addressable random messaging data. Every chat message you write in, in, a face, in Facebook right now goes into HBase. And so they have thousands of machines and it's running in a real time 24-7, 365 environment. They were the first company to do that. They did it at a massive scale and it's been wildly successful over there. And so I think with that use case, they sh they've shown that you can do real online serving applications at a massive scale, unprecedented, on top of this infrastructure. The other thing they've done is made it operable. And so they have an HBase ops team. They're very DevOpsy. They're really smart guys who know how to, who are basically engineers. Um, and they've done all kinds of stuff to make this stuff usable. I mean, when you're operating thousands of machines, you just have to do stuff to make it better. And so they've made so many improvements around performance, operability, all this kind of stuff. It's nice to have a nice uh, big name like that, you know, the now big name, but you know, back then it's you know, a couple years old, um, leading the market. What other use cases are you seeing out of this technical conference here that's popping out going, wow, I like that, some good, you did some work there. What's, so give some promotions and shout outs to some use cases that you're hearing in the hallways here. Yeah, I haven't heard all of them yet, but what's, for, what's exciting for me is, you know, I've always been on the kind of consumer internet side. So we call it consumer, in, consumer intelligence, and that's 
kind of this first really emergent pattern in big data, taking consumer signals and doing ad targeting or deal targeting or whatever kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but what's exciting is to see there's medical stuff here. People are doing genome analysis. People are doing um, environmental type stuff. There's a bunch of location things. It's just the diversity of the types of applications. It's not stumble upon and Facebook, who are kind of like yeah, two yeah. of the leaders, just in their applications, right? You got government here too. You got some financial services. You have Gap. You have a consumer, a retailer. You know, I mean, it's just really great to see like this diversity of applications, diversity of companies. Um, I think what you're still seeing is larger companies. And what's going to be really exciting is when you have a bunch of small companies who still have data and still want to do stuff with it, but they're not the Ebays and Gaps of the world that can take 10 people to go build a product. Awesome. Jonathan Gray, last time on theCUBE uh, in uh, Hadoop World was, was with Facebook. Um, now he's the co-founder of Continuity. Um, I guess still stealth startup, we heard a little bit, looks like they're gonna provide a managed hosting solution. Uh, hopefully with a lot of HBase software wrapped around us with some margin. Oh, there will be some uh, HBase there for sure. Um, great insights, thanks so much. Yeah. We'll see you later. We'll be right back with our next guest after this uh, break.